For this snippet of folklore, I thought I would look at some lighter-hearted fairy sightings. Sightings of pretty things and curious things, nature spirits of a softer reality. Sometimes fairy lore can be quite dark, so here are some nicer tales of true sightings. People have often asked me, do I think fairies are real? Yes I do, most wholeheartedly. But I think our lives are so hectic or stressed that we have lost a quietness and a stillness that is needed to truly tune into our surroundings. In our modern times, it is very difficult to switch off, to find a quiet headspace, but with practice this can be done. It's just that the time has to be right for any individual who wishes to find a more peaceful mentality and often life's problems dictate whether we can or cannot devote time to working towards this. It's nobody's fault, it's just the way life is. And so I am sharing these beautiful stories with you so you can keep the fairy faith and have a little magic in your day and listen to the folklore and have a sense of peace and hopefully relaxation. And maybe we can all eventually experience some of the mystery and magic ourselves. Meantime, the gathered tales are for all of us to enjoy and hold dear. The artist Cynthia Montefiore, living in Somerset in the southwest of England, wrote an article for Fate magazine in 1977 describing two sightings of the good folk that she had had. The first was when she was in her Somerset garden with her mother. Her mother was teaching her how to properly take cuttings from a rose bush that she had. They were standing facing each other. The rose bush was between them and her mother was there holding a pair of scissors ready to take the cuttings. Suddenly, Cynthia's mother put her finger to her lips in a gesture to be silent. She pointed quietly to one of the other rose flowers on the plant between them. In absolute enchantment, they could both see plain as day a tiny figure of a woman only six inches tall with the most brilliantly colored diaphanous wings resembling those of a dragonfly. The tiny creature's limbs were pale and pink and they could be seen through the clothes that she was wearing. Her hair was long and silvery. Cynthia describes it as resembling an aura. The two women watched this tiny fairy woman for around two minutes as she pointed what they presumed was a wand at the heart of each flower. A small light at the tip of the wand glowed. Her wings vibrated as a hummingbird wings do. And then, the tiny woman disappeared. Both women checked with each other what each of them had seen. The rose cutting lesson was completely forgotten as you can imagine. The second of Cynthia Montefiore's accounts occurred as she was sitting under a tree reading in her garden, the same garden as in the previous sighting. Something moved in front of her catching her eye. Cynthia saw a figure around 18 inches tall that was running from the lawn to the left hand side of her, then to another lawn and under a young fir tree where the figure disappeared. This was not a delicate looking fairy though this time, but sturdily built. She noted that it seemed to be wearing a one piece brown suit. It never looked in her direction, so she could not tell what its face looked like. She jumped up to rush to the fir tree to see if she could see it again, but she found absolutely nothing there. It was not too long after this sighting that a family friend talked with Cynthia and described to her the same small figure. He had been digging in the vegetable garden for Cynthia's mother when he had seen the figure also, and the description that he gave her matched her own sighting. A letter written to a magazine editor by a person who wished only to use their initials NVM stated that in 1916 they were staying at a place called Cookham Dean in Berkshire. One afternoon this person decided to take a basket and gather some blackberries on a common some walking distance away. The berries were many, but quite small. But then NVM noticed a bush that was standing quite alone and this was full of very fine fruit. 
They started to tug at some of these that were almost out of reach when the whole bush began to shiver. The branches parted and from the centre of the bush darted, as NVM described, a lean brown man dressed in brown with pointed cap and straggly beard. The viewer noticed that this strange figure was solid as far down as his waist, but from then on the legs were transparent and shadowy. The figure slid away as fast as lightning and completely disappeared. In shock, NVM dropped the basket of berries and ran as fast as they could all the way back home. The writer was convinced that this creature was the fairy spirit of that particular bush and regretted that they had never seen another since. A Mrs. Tweedale wrote of what she called a wonderful experience at the majestic Lupton House in South Devon. This proved to her beyond the shadow of any doubt that fairies exist. She was at Lupton and walking along the avenue of the house. Day was one of those that are completely still, not a single leaf moving. It seemed to her as though all nature was sleeping in the sunshine. Not too far in front of her, she caught some unusual movement with her eyes. A single long leaf, a blade of a wild iris, was moving violently. This one single leaf was swinging and bending energetically, and yet every other single part of the plant was as still as everything else in the garden. She expected that it must be a field mouse, and stepped very softly closer, hoping to see it. And instead, she had the surprise of her life. It was a tiny green man, about five inches long, swinging back downwards. He had a tiny green feet that she seemed to think were booted, again in green, and these were crossed over the long leaf. His hands were raised behind his head, also holding the leaf blade. She could see a merry little face as she described him, and something red that seemed to be used as a cap on his head. She watched him for a full moment while he swung on the leaf, and then he vanished. Since that day, she had seen other leaves moving on completely still plants, and yet, sadly, had never seen another fairy creature. The local representative of the Poetry Lovers Fellowship, Miss E. Woodford Grimes of Highcliffe-on-Sea, documented her experience that happened in early spring of 1938. She had been very ill, and because of this she considered that at the time she was in a very receptive state of mind. She had gone to recuperate at the home of a friend, a Miss Alsie Hall, who lived at Brockenhurst in the New Forest. They were walking together in a clearing on a hillside, walking towards a wood on the edge of the forest. Both were lovers of poetry and drama, and were talking about the cleverness of Shakespeare's techniques of his historical plays. They rose up a slight bank and suddenly stopped as they noticed something. Shocked, they both looked at each other and Miss Woodford Grimes asked her friend if she could see what she was seeing. Her friend simply answered, Fairies, and they are dressed in blue. They were between 30 to 50 feet distance from the ladies who stood watching as the creatures danced rhythmically to a music that neither of the women could hear. The only sound that there was was a soft wind that seemed almost like a sigh. There were no people or animals around at all, only the two women. Later they agreed that they both believed if they had tried to get nearer or had made a single sound, the whole sight would have disappeared. As it was, they had watched for quite some moments before the fairy creatures simply faded away. Now I come to my own very strange tale. I have to say I am not one gifted with what would be called the sight. My husband and my mum are. They see things all the time. But this was a very peculiar experience and one I am happy to share because of its, well, strangeness. I must state first, at the start, I was neither using any drug, not even the slightest painkiller, and neither had I had any alcohol. At the time, I was organising an art exhibition and performances, 
the teaching event and craft market in Devon. The theme, hardly surprisingly, was fairies and fantasy. It was a lot of hard work and I had left Mark and my husband at home and moved to my parents' house near the venue so I could be on call should I be needed and also to work on some art projects and props and decorations with my mum who was the other organiser. I was talking to Mark on the telephone one evening telling him about plans and how they were moving ahead drinking a mug of tea. At the time I was sat part way down the stairs facing a window that looked across the garden and onto a minor side road that wound its way into town. It was dark but not very late in the night. It was early evening, it being winter in England and the night draws in quite early. It was one of those times when you are concentrating on what you are saying while your vision has softened and you are simply gazing. As I was chatting and listening and looking over the garden past the hedge and to where the road would have been, I would estimate it was a good five foot below the level of the gardens, a movement taller than the neighbour's hedge on the left hand side caught my eye. Still talking I looked in that direction, for some reason expecting someone to be walking past which would have been ridiculous as they would have had to have been around 10 foot tall, but I didn't register that at the time. It only hit me later. What I did see was not a person, but a creature that was to all intents and purposes a tree man. A tree man. Most people will know of the Ents from the Lord of the Rings. This was similar but more slender, a more smaller tree, brown limbed, no leaves that I can recall, but I do remember the tree bark being very distinct. It had a face too, looking something like my husband would paint, or an Arthur Rackham tree. And this thing was not fleeting, it did not disappear. I watched its arms swing with each step it must be taking quite slowly and steadily as it started to pass our own family garden, just minding its business, walking down the road, and I lost sight of it as it passed the hedges of our neighbour's gardens on the right hand side. Now, people I have told have asked was I shocked or frightened, to be honest no. I have been reading about studying and collecting tales of fairy creatures in the paranormal since I was a very little girl, so yes I was surprised, but definitely not frightened. I actually first thought something like, well that was different, and then not long after that felt a huge surge of gratitude for the experience. I don't know what this fey creature was doing or what it was, but I feel very blessed to have had the experience. I have wondered if because I was so immersed in the physical act of the arts and folklore aspect of the event I was setting up, that maybe I tuned into something that I just couldn't usually see. The event planning took months and the design of the event and the choreographies we were working on, the set designs, constantly speaking with other professional artists, I was completely immersed in that world for months and that creative energy space, all to do with fairies, wood woeses. Maybe that was what gave me the gift to see something that normally I just can't, I don't know, but I am very grateful for the experience as curious as it may be. I hope you enjoyed this snippet of fairy lore. I have so many accounts of strange happenings to share with you and I don't ask you to believe because obviously not everybody does, but whatever is going on when we see these things we can't explain and most of these accounts come from very straightforward and professional individuals, doesn't it make us smile and be glad that basically we humans as clever as we think we are well, we don't really have all the answers at all, and nor should we. 
The universe is a much better place with an element of mystery and magic. If you have enjoyed this episode, please tap like. And if you have really enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and thank you to those kind people who already have. Until next time, dear friends, keep well, brightest of blessings and remember, don't play with the fairy folk or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.